right, so there she is, CZ455. After, uh, man, it's hard to say how many rounds. I did lose count. I'm not sure how high it is, but I know it's over 10,000 rounds right now, uh, which is not hard to do on any rimfire. If you shoot plenty of rimfire, you know, it's, it's just really quick to blow through, you know, 300 rounds in a day even. And so uh, over the, the couple years that I've had this rifle, maybe it's a few years now, but at least a couple, uh, this rifle has almost exclusively been shooting a Gila Super Extra Copper Plated. And so that's, uh, that's not a high match round. That's not something you would use for like only group shooting at real long range. It's uh, definitely a supersonic round. But this rifle has seen mostly that round. So just in case you're curious what I'm putting through the rifle, um, if I'm not shooting a match and I'm not shooting for groups at real, real long range, I just run that and it's done really well. I'll show you some groups later just to give you an idea of what this rifle can perform um, or how it can perform with that ammo combination. So I guess I'll start from uh, the tip from the end here. From the end, it's uh, threaded. If you haven't seen that before, you can watch my previous video. I'm glad it's threaded. I don't have a silencer, although I've thrown my friend's silencers on there in the past. and. Uh, it's cool to have a can on there. It's extremely quiet. It does seem to mess with the harmonics a little bit. And so at this point, I just kind of prefer not running the can, honestly. I don't think I'll be buying one because it's quiet as it is. It's really not that loud, especially if you're running subs. And the extra can price, I just put that in ammo. So it's not super tempting to me. It's a little tempting though. The bipod that I've chosen to run is the Magpul bipod with a QD I had to add on there. It's not ideal, I'm gonna tell you that. Uh, this rifle, unless you wanna run something that runs off of a swivel, like a bipod off a swivel, maybe one of those uh, Harris bipods, uh, you can do that. I put a converter on there. So this spot right here, I actually filed this just a little bit to make sure it would fit well because that Magpul bipod with the converter, it's just, I mean, it sits up high, it's not perfect, it's not ideal, but it's worked well. Uh, the groups that I've gotten, you really can't complain about those. I don't think anybody will speculate too much about those groups because they're fantastic. Uh, the bipod um, connection here though is not, it's not fantastic. You use one of these tightening devices on the swivel stud itself, there's a converter, and then you have a one single slot Picatinny, which doesn't work great because the Magpul bipod uses two Picatinny, which I think is a failure on their part. But CZ has two swivel studs here, and both of them were actually sunken in too deep when I first got the rifle. Um, it, it, it didn't work well for putting on just a sling or a bipod. I was kind of disappointed in that. I had to back them out. It seemed a little harsh on the stock, but that's what I had to do right off the bat. Um, so this, this attachment method, I don't know. It's just not that great. And plus, I had to file on this tensioner here to even get any of the bipods to work with this so not an ideal situation but man I've put up with a lot of crap over the time with that moving on down I just have a magpole sling which if I'm gonna sling it in a competition it's usually for pretty minimal nominal support I don't have a lot of expertise in slings and I don't pretend to so I just use this guy and actually it's gotten me through quite a few stages in NRL and I, I like it um, good strong sturdy simple sling not overly much not overly heavy or anything um, just a, just a sling. All right, moving on. Uh, this attachment from, I think Hog Saddle was selling these, and I forget what this is called, but it's a barricade grip, you know? On the bottom, uh, there's a nice wide portion here. I appreciated that on the rifle because if you're either gonna shoot off of a bag or if you wanna shoot the stages, uh, first of all, you don't want something slippery, but you, you want a nice wide spot there to rest it on so that the rifle can stay relatively level. And a lot, of, a lot of rifles that are real curvy on the bottom, that's problematic once you get up to something like this. If you're trying to shoot off of a flat surface, it just wants to roll on you. And if, if you don't have a cant indicator, you're kind of screwed. And then uh, even if you do have a cant indicator, it's just so much more work than having one flat surface. And so this has been super helpful. It's an addition. I think this rifle is served very well by having that there because otherwise it's just slippery. It's just really slippery on this laminated painted stock. Moving on down, so I have a 10 round mag. That does not come stock with the rifle, it should. Uh, it's ended with one of these little dinky five rounders and that's it. One thing you'll notice about CZ, which I love by the way, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan of CZ most of the time. Uh, they're stingy on magazines and I don't understand why that is. I have no idea. Everybody else can throw in enough mags, but CZ seems to throw in just uh, a five rounder and with her pistols, it's like you get two and that's it. 
Uh, moving on further back, the trigger that I've gone with is the Yoday trigger. In my 452, I have their lightest. I think it's like a 10 ounce trigger, and that's uh, it's pretty scary light. I don't believe it's drop safe, so I only use it for groups or shooting ELR. And so this one, I've opted to go with something that's I think it's probably one and three quarter pounds, somewhere in that range. Uh, it appears to be drop safe. I've tested it quite a few times and hammered on the button. It's not done anything. So good trigger, not a lot of creep. It's allowed me to get some really decent groups, and it was like it was like 15 bucks, super cheap. So that's been good, and that works with the 455 and 452 models. I don't believe that that trigger kit will work with future models. Don't quote me on that, but I'm I'm thinking it probably is a different trigger design in the 457 models. So moving on back, this stock, the way that it's designed, there's there's a comb here. You're able to get this bolt out and run your cleaning rod down there. It's kind of a tight fit, but you can run it in there. Um, I put a cheek riser on there, just a bent piece of Kydex that I had, because I wanted to add a 20 MOA rail right here from UTG, I think. Or no, this is an EGW. Yeah, this one's an EGW. That's a 20 MOA rail. Uh, if I could go back, I would probably have done a 30 MOA rail or a 40 MOA rail because the optics can handle it. Most of the modern optics that are good, especially your 34 millimeter tube optics, there is plenty of space here. It's a, it's about, man, it's got to be a, a half inch almost of space under here, quite a scope gap. And uh, that's because they don't put Picatinny on here, but I'll, I'll keep moving back and I'll come back to that. The length of pull, uh, it's too short. It's definitely too short. This would fit like a, a real short 5'9", 5'10 guy decently. But for me, I'm 6'5", and so I had to add a limb saver with quite a bit of a, um, extra on there. I think that's a full inch, if I remember right, on the back. And it's given me enough for winter time when I'm wearing extra layers, and then summertime it's just really perfect. Uh, it's got somewhat of a bag rider on the bottom. This is just the Boyd's uh, varmint stock that they had this in. So it's got somewhat of a bag rider here. That's really convenient. Um, but the bipods that I've been running, you know, the real tall, tall bipods, shoot over weeds or whatever I have in front of me. I haven't really been using that portion so much, but when I do get down nice and low, I like this. I like this spot. I really like stocks more than chassis generally, and uh, I appreciate these two segments right here. It's got a nice curvy pistol grip right there. Uh, it could use a palm swell in my opinion, just as a, a ramp, a thumb ramp, a place to hold consistently. Um, but that's really more of a criticism of the stock. And, and again, that's not a CZ stock, that's a Boyd stock as far as I understand. It's their Varmeter stock. So let's get to the bolt itself. The bolt itself on my 452, now my 452 has over, I think it's, I think it's over 40,000 rounds now. Um, this one being just over 10,000, no signs of wear, definitely gets dirty uh, pretty frequently, even though I shoot copper. Rimfire is just a dirty cartridge, you know, and uh, this doesn't show any signs of wear. Just gets dirty. That's it. Looks good. I will say these extractors, after it gets dirty, these extractors start to slow down a little bit. You start to notice uh, you might get a double feed or a, a hang, uh, hanging round stuck in the loading area there, or the breech something like that because of how dirty that can get and so I clean it out every probably every 300 rounds which just about every time I go to the range I'm shooting about 300 rounds now for the uh, the actual barrel and chamber itself I've had a, a, a really good time with this action it locks up really nice and tight and I appreciate how tightly it locks up because I know I'm getting good contact on that case um, it's just not that easy though it's really not that easy to lift it. It does kind of move you around a little bit, especially when it's cold. When you go out and it's 10 degrees, zero degrees, you know, I'm in Minnesota, so that's that's nothing, that's frequent. It just is really hard to lift that. And so in competitions and stuff, I've noticed some guys with some of the other actions, uh, they do a little better overall with lifting that bolt handle and not having so much movement in the reticle and that kind of thing. That matters more when you're like on a barricade stage or something. Moving up to here. So again, I'm not sure why CZ put dovetail on this rifle. If somebody understands or knows why, go ahead and comment that down below because if there's a good reason, I would actually like to know. To me, it's just stupid to have dovetail on a rifle in 2020. I mean, this was produced years ago, but even at that point, why isn't it Picatinny, guys? I just don't understand. It doesn't seem to make sense to me. Maybe it had something to do with the interference um, with the 455. Let me grab the bolt here. So 
So with the 455, that bolt doesn't have a lot of clearance. So maybe if it was already Picatinny, there would be people running into a lot of issues with their scope. But I guess it just needed to redesign in some way. You know, old school safety, by the way. It's the uh, push forward for safe, push back, pull back for fire. Not a lot, not a problem with that. I just don't use the safety that much. So again, uh, EGW 20 MOA converter. On top, I have some burst pepper rings, and I don't believe those are 20 MOA. I think those are zero MOA. 34 millimeter rings with uh, this is MK Machining's bubble level. I like MK Machining. They're cool. They make good stuff. This has been a really nice polymer bubble level. Very affordable. Yeah, once you get to that 34 millimeter range for optics, things generally start to get more expensive, although there's more being produced because of how common 34 mils are becoming for a main tube. Uh, this is the Athlon Aries ETR, four and a half to 30 by 56. And so this has been a great optic. I'll have a review out about that. But this is kind of the one that lives on this rifle. Seems to do really well. It's a great pair, um, really good magnification range overkill for a 22 probably but when when you get out to a few hundred yards it's nice to be able to spot those hits or a spot for somebody else who's shooting it's such a small round it really doesn't disturb the ground too much you know the barrel itself is a real full contour it's real heavy the rifle itself is is a chunker that's what most people notice when they pick up this rifle i let some friends run it in the nrl last year and they're like oh my gosh i didn't realize how heavy it would be so this big optic that's the way i like to run it it's only a 16 inch barrel and i wish it was a 20 inch um, which they do sell those models. I just didn't buy it. Uh, the 20 inch is probably balanced a little better. Here's something for NRL that kind of matters. The balance point is right on the magazine. So that doesn't really matter when you are uh, shooting a stage where you can have your five rounder over that and then do a mag change. But if you're doing a stage where you need to be braced in something like this, it'd be really nice to be able to load in and then stop and balance. But this rifle, uh, you gotta be all the way forward, just about to that trigger guard. That's kind of your stopper sometimes. It's not super convenient. I don't prefer it that way. It does seem to cause a little bit of problem when I run the 10 rounder. I think one stage, I think one stage last year, because I loaded it, I was able to catch up on some of the, the materials loading into and it did eject my magazine because it's a, a front eject button instead of a rear eject button. I think at this point I would prefer a rear eject button than a front eject button, but that's it's not that big of a deal. It's just when you're loading into something on a stage, you do tend to hang up a little bit in here and there's a chance it'll drop your magazine. So if you're running NRL, if there's a competition rifle for you, just something to be aware of when you're running the stage. I like the rifle quite a bit. I don't have a lot of complaints about its performance. I just think there are improvements there to be made. It looks like the 457 improves on some of those things. So if you're out there and you're, you're seeing a 455 version out there, uh, maybe in the 350, 400 range, um, I think at the $350 price point, I would still buy one of these because this is performing really well. It's, it's making some really great, great tight groups at long range and close range. Uh, most of the time people can't believe it until they see it with their own eyes. That's the truth. Um, it's dependent on the shooter, dependent on his knowledge of ammunition and temperature and wind and all the normal things. Uh, this rifle can outshoot you. It really can. It's it's phenomenal. And for the price, I think it's very competitive. So if you see one around there in that $350, $400 price range, buy it. Otherwise, wait for the 457, which I think I will be doing a comparison between the 452, the 455, and hopefully here in the next few months, I'll get my hands on the new 457, one of those models. I haven't decided yet, but something probably in 20 inch.
Thanks guys for checking out my channel. I really appreciate that. I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe so I can get you more content over this uh, coronavirus time where you're probably just sitting around watching a lot of stuff anyways. And uh, if you would like to just check out some of these videos, definitely do that though. If you would, it'd be really nice if you could go ahead and you know, click the button. If you just click that, all you gotta do is just go, just reach over there with your mouse. You just drag, yep, over a little bit. And if you just click that, that's right.